Hello everybody, my name is Will, and welcome back! Uh, just after I said I probably wouldn't be able to get any KSP2 content recorded, to uh, more KSP2 content. Um, because frankly, the last one uh, did very well. So, <laughs> I'm back for more of that, uh, because clearly, you're interested in seeing it. And um, I decided that uh, so far, most of my successes had been in planes rather than rockets. Um, I don't know if I'm just bad at rockets or what, but it it was not it was not playing ball, um, and and building rockets was like just just a a lot worse, <laughs> much more chaotic. So I went to uh, I went to the well I I would say space plane hangar. That's not the thing anymore. It's it's the same building. I went I tried to build an SSTO and. Uh, the, here it is. Um, here is the SSTO in in its very very simplest forms. Um, I'm not very good at SSTOs. Is is the Im immediate downside of that? Um, <laughs> I'm not not the best, but I thought I'd give it a shot because uh, hey, you know, new game. Maybe maybe I'm better in in this new game. Um, I'm not. Just for warning. Uh, just. <laughs> <laughs> letting you know that this is this is just a scuffed mission and a half here um but i mean i think the craft looks quite nice uh you can th this is the general shape of it that we we stick with through the whole thing so you know i, I mean a big old delta wing um we do eventually add canards up the front because uh it just didn't have enough didn't have enough authority to pull off the ground um and so I, I gave in, I added those, which I think I think take away from the look of this thing, but you might disagree. You might prefer it with the canards. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's powered by two rapier engines, which are the, uh, if you don't know, the engines that shift from air breathing to, like, closed cycle, so uh, jet engine that also can work as a rocket engine um, once you run out of air, or swap in this case. Um... But yeah, here I'm just adding all the things that I need to do for it to be an SSTO. Um, so in space, wings, not going to work great, to be honest. They need air. Um, no air up there in space. Kind of a defining feature of the whole whole place. Um, so yeah, we're going to need monopropellant thrusters, which I've put on the wingtips and on the front and back of the fuse. It's not enough, frankly. It's not It's not very agile in space, but we do have a reaction control room. Uh, room? A reaction control wheel that we put up at the front as well. So that's gonna help us move around as well. And I'm just putting on some solar panels so we don't run out of electric charge while we're in space, because if these engines are the same as they were in KSP-1, then they don't give us any electric charge, uh, which normal rocket engines and jet engines do. Um, so, I, yeah, I, to be honest, I don't know why that was with the rapier engine in KSP-1, or if it still is like that, why it is now. Uh, I, I did try and give the front wing, uh, the main wing, like a little bit of extra lift, so it would kind of lift itself off the runway, um, and I wouldn't need the canards as much, but that uh, I, I couldn't get the movement as fine as I would have liked, and I decided it was a silly idea anyway, so instead I've pitched the elevator down a little bit so that it kind of pushes the back of the plane down naturally, which should offset the uh, effects of gravity, mostly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's all built, so now it's time for uh, the first uh, test flight! Of this, probably not going to get to space on this one, I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, uh, oh yeah, well, let's see how far we can get, but we're not we're not really going to make it to space, I'd imagine. Uh, probably going to run out of fuel if we if we do get that far. Um, and then I remembered that if you have a wheel at the front, you need to adjust the friction control. Uh, otherwise, uh, things happen that look very much like this, um, <laughs> which aren't great for the continued success of your mission, frankly. Um, yeah. Uh, but that's fine. That was that was a simulation. Uh, you know, Bob may have died there, but the real Bob is here to fly this one. Um, and now that I've adjusted the front landing gear's authority, uh, sorry, friction control, we should have no problem, right? No, no, n that issue from before will be gone, and we can just take off nicely and see how close we get to space. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is 
this is where I decided I need canards because it just wouldn't pull off the ground. Uh, it nothing nothing was happening here, and as I pulled up, it, it brought some instability into the craft, and I, I very nearly re re <laughs> reverted the flight right then and there. But I, I wanted to see what would happen, you know. So I cut the throttle, I held the brakes, uh, and I was like, "Can I save this?" And then we go right through a tree. Uh, luckily. The trees are, um, <laughs> they don't have colliders, but if it did, uh, I'm afraid Bob probably would have bit the dust there as well, to be honest. Uh, and we lose a monopropellant thruster, but ultimately, we do save the craft. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a third time is luck. They say that, don't they? Third time lucky. Uh, we, we have, uh, added our canards at the front now. Um, and, and, and uh, well, you can hear my live reaction. Oh, that's better. That's a lot better. <laughs> we might actually take off this time. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's, that's a better sign than smashing into the trees. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll save you the entire flight because, uh, yeah, uh, well, spoiler alert, we don't make it on this one. <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, I pitch up to like a 30 degree climb until we reach about 10,000 meters, uh, and then I flatten off and we fly completely horizontally, uh, so long as we are still accelerating, um, up to about 1,100 meters a second, and then that's when I do my pitch up. This is... Te this tends to be how I do my SSTO flights. I'm not sure if it's the ideal way of doing it, um, but that that tends to be my way. And and an extra thing on this one, I didn't quite go to 10k before I leveled out the first time. So, just all in all, not a great launch. But uh, frankly, the craft just wasn't ready to launch. Uh, and uh, Bob, who clearly hasn't realised this yet, uh, looking very indifferent to uh, <laughs> the situation he's in there. But uh, yeah, um, very soon we run out of liquid fuel um, in our engines and uh, we, we, we hear the horrific knocking of uh, the rapier engines dying a death, uh, which, yeah, well, you'll hear. <laughs> That's not a good sound. Uh... <laughs> oh. That's better. That's more like it. And we're out of fuel. Well, we made it... Just under halfway to our apoapsis. Um... Paige, go away. Right. More liquid fuel needed. <laughs> And so, no more liquid fuel was added, um, however, I neglected to counteract the new liquid fuel which I was putting in the rocket with... Rocket? Plane? Rocket? It's... it's a rocket plane, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, I neglected to put enough oxidizer in for the liquid fuel I was adding. Uh, so, here I'm, I'm at altitude, I t pitch up, I swap over to closed cycle mode, and I see that my delta V is like 300, and I, I well, <laughs> I, I gave up. I was like, yeah, that's that's not enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, this 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 wasn't the best of launches, to be honest. I, I, I might have been better staying at home for this one. <laughs> And now, uh, you get to watch a whole launch. Yeah, the, the whole thing from, from start to finish, uh, pretty much. Um, because, well, this one, uh, we make it. Uh, so I've added, I've added some more uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer, or methylox, to counteract uh, the problem we had last time. And now we just have more fuel in general. You can see the, the pods that the engines are mounted to uh, extend further up the fuselage now. Um, so yeah, there's, there's quite a lot more fuel in, in this than there were was on the previous version, which makes it a lot heavier. It, it, it's a little bit close to the wire, really doesn't quite have the thrust to weight ratio in the atmosphere to reach that like 1100 meters a second comfortably so a little bit a little bit nervous at this point in time where you know the, the speed was just slowly ticking up over 400 and i could have gone into a dive to like 
get that speed and then get the intakes sucking in enough air but i figured that i'd give it a shot and see and see if it would go over and it does uh eventually it it, it starts going really quick and you can see about now we're at about a thousand start pitching up to go for our uh, burn to get our apoapsis up to orbital height uh, and very shortly we'll be swap swapping over to closed cycle mode with these uh, rapier engines uh which is right now there we go um boosting up our altitude Getting that apoapsis up, we have a lot more Delta V than last time. We had about 300 at this point last time, and I think, if I'm reading that rightly, we at the moment, after this amount of burning, we've just dipped under 1,000. And, uh, yeah, it's it just the circularization burn left, but uh, it's a lot better than last time. <laughs> Probably going to be a bit of a wonky orbit because of our less-than-ideal rudder authority. And also, the SAS is wiggling. But, uh, not bad. Still 800 meters a second. We might make it. <laughs> not wasting any Delta V. We've not got a lot. <laughs> we are running on fumes here. Uh, but fumes may well be all I need. Yeah, fumes it was. I'm in space. <laughs> yeah, I've succeeded. Yeah, and now I gotta go home. That's the hard part, annoyingly. I don't have a space station to dock to or anything fancy, uh, and I don't really have the fuel for that, so I'm kind of glad, to be honest. But all good things must eventually come to an end, and unfortunately, uh, me being in space with this SSTO also had to come to an end. So it was it was time for me to deorbit my lovely little SSTO, which we have we've got this far. Um, I've got got the very very pretty screenshot section though, so that I can grab myself a thumbnail. You know, did yeah, gotta do that. Uh <laughs> I <laughs> can't, can't forget my duties, after all. Um, and then just uh, point it retrograde and aim for the Kerbal Space Center. Um, however, yes, th this, this is a very large however. Um, I may have slightly forgotten how to get back to the KSC using an SSTO. And, um, well, yeah, uh, we miss quite badly, to be honest. Uh <laughs> It's just an awful noise. <laughs> it's not a great noise when you're trying to re-enter the atmosphere. I would love to say that I, I, I didn't miss by that much and we had enough jet fuel to uh, to fly back, but yeah, that that would be a lie, to be honest. Um, we didn't we didn't even get to the island airstrip. It, it was quite a miss. Um, and, 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 well, maybe somebody... Uh, might have forgotten to quick save while in orbit, uh, and so, yeah. Uh, uh oh, uh, time for another launch. <laughs> what I've done there is a worse job at getting to orbit, <laughs> but it works. We are a hundred meters above the atmosphere. <laughs> it counts. I'll remember to quick save this time. And that way, if I miss the runway, we're not as bad. <laughs> so yeah, after uh, recalculating where I needed to aim my rocket to uh, just about after the uh, island airstrip, uh, you can see where the uh, line that shows you uh, Kerbin's <laughs> trajectory, I guess. Ker Kerbin's trajectory around uh, Kerbal. Is that? I think that's what the star is called. Um, that's roughly, I aimed for just past that, because last time I was quite a long way past that. Um, and uh, we're just passing the desert, which is the previous kind of landmass before you get to the landmass, what the Kerbal Space Program Center case center. What am I on about? The Kerbal Space Center is on. Um, <laughs> and uh, here we are, just coming over home, essentially. And uh, just in the distance there 
you can see the mountain range, which just is at the uh, end of the, you know, runway, I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> goodness me, I am I'm bad at explaining... I shouldn't. I should not be a geography teacher. Basically, I'm bad at explaining land formations. But yeah, just under those uh, clouds ahead of us, that's where our Kerbal Space Center is, and uh, we're just getting into the thick bit of the atmosphere here. Um, and I was worried that I would overshoot, so here I am, just uh, using my RCS thrusters to gain a little bit more in the way of pitch authority, so I can nose down, provide more of a surface to the uh you know oncoming wind and uh, gives a bit of drag and I, I maybe was a little bit panicked that i was now going too fast and i would uh, overshoot a little bit more and then very quickly realized i panicked too much <laughs> and burn the engines uh, so that we don't undershoot the runway um generally i think this is this this part of the mission is not my not my forte <laughs> But yeah, uh, you can you can just see through the clouds, which do look beautiful, especially um, when uh, you're at a little bit of a distance away from them uh, and you can't quite see how they're done because I, I think they're volumetric and they got they look a little bit grainy when you're super close. But like from a distance, absolutely stunning. Um, and just rolling into the space center here uh, for the right hand side runway. Oh, wow. It is so bouncy. This fuselage is made of plastic, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but here we are. Only on my uh, third attempt to land, and only like the sixth launch, so I'd say that's not too bad. <laughs> and... Unless something goes horrifically wrong. I landed it. We did it. <laughs> I made it home. Oh, yes. I, I honestly wasn't sure I'd actually make this work. <laughs> but we did it. It works. Um, and with a little bit of fuel left. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay grand well that's that <laughs> and yeah that's that's that for today um i i would like to do a little bit more with uh the ssto's in the future um but you know i need to get a uh, space station built so that i can dock to it i need to you know actually <laughs> have some stuff to do with them um, perhaps I could try and build one to get to the moon that's something I've never done before um, and that's going to be a challenge in itself because the way you used to do that is by using nuclear engines that now don't use the same fuel as rocket uh, sorry jet engines they now use uh, hydrogen so I'm going to have to carry hydrogen tanks up to orbit and they're going to be quite heavy uh, so yeah, it's going to be a whole kettle of fish doing that so something I could try to do um, but yeah definitely uh bit of a learning experience as this is uh, something I was never good at in KSP1 and uh, something I've obviously never done before in KSP2. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, comment and or subscribe to the channel. Let me know uh, if you want to see any specific missions in KSP2 that I can attempt to take on. Um, it may be a week or two before I can do some more general videos uh, because that's when our first update is coming out, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, um... This 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 was a success, a measured success, but a success nonetheless. Uh, and with that, I will see you in the future. Goodbye. And as always, a huge thank you to this channel's patrons: Last Legend Eleven, Cody N, Nicholas K, Just a Casual T sixty two M one, Gunmaster nine two nine, Zite Wolverine, Rivera, Tree Loving Mango, Cam Jam one three five, Sad Cat, DJ Pete, Yoki 003, Caligo Drake, and Rule Stalls Bucket. Ooh, that's a mouthful now. Thank you so much.